let's just go back to when you launched ABC that out at Gander. Um, was it worth it? Was it worth doing it? I mean, you, you knocked him out of the, the game in Newfoundland and Labrador, but he's still prime minister. No, absolutely. Y you know, you can't put a price on pride. And, you know, uh, the man gave the province, the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, a commitment and in writing and a significant commitment worth several billions of dollars uh, and then broke it. And from our perspective, if we elect no seats, sure, we might pay a financial price, but we're right. We are, you know, our pride is at stake and it's proven to be true right across the country. I mean, as over time, we've seen that this man cannot be trusted. He has no integrity. He's trying to stifle democracy. There's no end to what he's doing. And, you know, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians have stood up and, and been counted. And, you know, the last election, he tried to marginalize Quebec, but he continues to get elected because he's a very good political strategi strategist. But he's a lousy prime minister who's divisive. And, you know, if you're going to tr try and divide and conquer parts of your country in order to get elected, then you're not the guy I want for prime minister. Do you think that's what's happening now, divide and conquer? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what he's, you know, it's region against region, it's religion against religion, it's nationalities, uh, immigrant, immigrants against immigrants, it's uh, haves versus have-nots. He'll carve it out, he'll pick out what he needs to get to that critical high 30s, 40 percent, and if that get, gets him elected, he doesn't care about the damage he does and the collateral damage that he leaves along the way. How is that somebody who should be leading a great country like Canada? You know, we, we're becoming a laughingstock. There was a an article in the New York Times, if I remember back in, in, in August, which talked about kind of, it, it, wasn't the it wasn't entitled to the demise of Canada, but it was how we are now seen under a Harper government, and it's not pretty. Your advice to conservatives in this election is, is if you can't vote for another party, just don't vote at all. Absolutely. I mean, that 30% base that he talks about, and, uh, you know, if, if that stay is solid and he's able to incrementally increase, I mean, you could end up with a minority Harper government. You know, that would be the worst possible thing that could happen to Canada. You know, he touts that, you know, well, you know, others aren't ready or others would be too far left or too far, that it'd be too extreme, and I'm the only one who can save the economy. Well, let's look at his record. His record is terrible. There's evidence that shows that he's the worst prime minister since 1945. That's 70 years of prime ministers. Uh, there's been deficits for the last six years, yet he criticized people who are going to have deficits. Uh, you know, youth employment has not been good. There's not a lot of great, new, uh, uh, well-paying jobs being created in the country. Uh, there's not, I watched him during the recession. I was premier during the recession, and his monthly predictions were all wrong. You know, he floated through that recession because of the, the condition that Paul Martin had left the country in, which was in good shape. So he floated through and he took all the credit for it. So I can tell you categorically that based on an analysis of the economic indicators that Stephen Harper is not good for the economy in this country. He's basically, in, in, in 2015, there's 139 under con other countries in the world they're doing better than we are. Now, what does that tell you? Why is he the savior of the economy? There's no good reason to vote for him in my mind. So who should people vote for? If you're telling conservative supporters who can't vote for the other teams to stay home, what do you think voters who would vote liberal or would vote NDP, what do you think they should do on October? Well, you know, you vote, you know, I think voters have a good choice there. There's a broad range of leaders there, all standing for different things. They're well-spoken, they're articulate. I mean, I, you know, uh, for, uh, you know the, I can't support the bloc, for example. But when you look at the, uh, and if you look at the other three parties, well, then they all have good leaders, and people have to make up their own mind. It's not for me to tell people, you know, how to vote. I, you know, I'm doing this interview, quite frankly, because I love this country and I love this province, uh, and I just feel people need to speak out on why Stephen Harper is not good for this country. But it's certainly not for me to try and dictate to people who they should vote for. But I'm just saying who they shouldn't vote for.